All right, time to clean them up. And there you go. Almost three pounds of fresh caught boneless mangrove snapper fillets. Nice. Alrighty, I got my two and three quarter pounds of nice boneless fillets off of those uh, four mangrove snappers I kept. So I thought about it, and since I have so much extra meat there, I think what I'm going to do is some panko fried fish fingers. Now, I love just batter fried fish, but the only problem with normal batter fry is after a couple hours, then with that oil, it starts to go soggy, and it's really hard to recuperate from that. But with the panko ones, because they're really just tiny breadcrumbs, what I do is after that first night, I'll throw them on a uh, plate with some uh, newspaper and then uh, put a saran wrap, throw them in the refrigerator. And then the next day, I'll just grab a couple of them, throw them in my toaster oven, put them through a couple of uh, toast cycles. Okay, and then uh, that heats up the core fish part of it, but then it crisps up those pankos again because they're just basically a lot of loose crumbs, so a lot of surface area. So they get just as crunchy as they started with. So it's such a great snack. All day long, I'll just grab a couple, toast them up, have my uh, coffee cup full of tartar sauce, dip them, chow on them, and I'm back out the door again. So just a great way of doing it. So I am going to show you how I do it, quick and easy. So let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this fillet up. And basically what we're looking to do is to get similarly sized pieces, keep the relatively same proportions. And what that's going to allow us to do is to cook them at a similar time frame, since they'll all be roughly about the same size. So we're just going to cut these guys into strips. There. Cut these bigger ones in half, and there we go. Got our nice bite-sized fish fingers. All right, now that the uh, fish are all cut up to finger size, now we're gonna get ready to the next step, which is the batter and coating mix. So for that, we've got a couple of eggs. Basically, you just need enough egg wash to coat all the flays that you have. So I've got three here. Um, I've got my Japanese style panko, so just a little container of that. And I've got, uh, I think this is our flour. Yeah, I grabbed the right bag, so we got a bag full of flour there. All right, step one, we're gonna coat our fish fillets in flour. Okay, so what I've done is I filled a uh, baggie full of flour. I'm just gonna drop a couple of handfuls in there. And that'll help speed up the process just by quickly coating them. Get them all done in one shot. Shake them off, and then we're nice and flour coated, ready for stage two. All right, now that all of our fish fillets are flour coated there, uh, the next step is going to be dipping them into our egg wash, then into our panko. Then the most important part is we're gonna set them on our drying rack. Uh, what that's gonna do is let them air out a bit and that's actually gonna bond the batter and the panko to the fillets. So when these hit the uh, hot oil, they're gonna be stuck to the fillet and they're not gonna flake off. So very important step there. So let's get the production line moving. All right, so it's gonna get dipped into the egg wash there. Shake it off a bit. Hitting our panko, try to make sure everything is covered. And once it's all covered, go right onto our drying rack. So that is going to be our process. And voila, panko battered fish fillets all ready for the fryer. So let's head on out there. All right, I got some canola oil. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the pan and get that preheated. There we go. Now we're just gonna let that heat up and then we'll be ready to go. To test to see if the oil is ready, just gonna take a few of these crumbs off. Drop them in there and see them sizzle. That means it's good to go. Now when we lay these fillets down, 
you can just drop them in there but since we're not deep frying we're not doing it with a lot of oil you have to be careful that the fillets don't touch the bottom of the pan or sit on the bottom of the pan because what will happen is that the uh, batter will stick to the bottom and when you try to move it it tears off and then you've lost that crispy crust so to get started I'm going to basically gently drop a couple in there and you don't want to do too many at once because it'll drop the temperature of the oil. But this is also the important reason why to do similar sized pieces so that it cooks roughly the same time frame. So I think I'm just going to put... See how they're not sticking, so that's what I want to make sure it happens. Keep them separated so they don't stick to each other. And I think I'll do probably four to five pieces at a time. Then like that allows that crust to build before it hits the bottom of the pan and so it won't stick. And then we'll do one small piece here. Ooh. Keep it moving so it doesn't stick. Alright. There we go. We are frying. Okay, in regards to the doneness, all we're looking at is the amount of browning that we're getting. So what we're looking for is a light brown to a dark brown, depending on how well you want them done. So you can kind of see there. So that side is good. So I'm going to go ahead and start flipping them. Once one is done, they'll all be ready. So I'm just going to give them a flip to get the other side cooking. Beautiful. So roughly about five to six minutes total time. So two to three minutes on each side is basically good enough. But again, it's all about the brownness. Uh, the, the, the fish will cook super quickly in this hot oil. So regardless if you do a, a very, very light brown, it'll be cooked through. Or if you do a full dark brown, uh, it protects the, uh, the moisture from escaping by the quick heat. So that's okay as well. All right. They look done there, so I'm going to start taking them out here. And I've got a rack with some uh, newspaper and paper towel to let them dry out. And I'm taking them out uh, first in, first out. Alright, this is the last of it. And that's what I call my mountain of mangroves. <laughs> so let's plate this thing up. And that's how we do it. <laughs> mountain of mangrove snappers. Now I just got to eat it all. But. Uh, looking forward to this. A little bit of homemade tartar sauce. Mm. So good. Mm. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Mm. Delicious. But like I said, the reason why I really like this, even though I got that mountain load and I probably could eat it all, I could spread it across a few meals and just keep it refrigerated. And then when I want a few pieces, throw it in the toaster oven and boom, it's right back to how it started with. Just perfect. So anyways, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.